So it's, it's critical to correctly identify the function of the behavior in order to have an effective behavior intervention plan. And I'll give you an example of what I mean by that. So we're not just looking at a behavior and saying, oh, your child rips paper, well, this is what you do. We're really wanting to see what the function of them ripping the paper is. So say, for example, we have two children, they both engage in ripping paper, um, Alex and Sam. So anytime paper is presented to Alex during a tabletop structured activity, he rips the paper. But he doesn't rip paper during free play or any time kind of outside of that tabletop time. Sam, on the other hand, will rip paper at any opportunity and he even seeks it out. He digs into the art supply closet, you know, mom and dad have to hide their mail at home because he is going after that paper. So we can kind of make some inferences about why they're ripping paper based on those little vignettes, right? So Alex is probably engaging in the behavior to escape a task, right? He doesn't want to do that tabletop activity. He thinks if I don't have my worksheet, then I don't have anything to do. Takes care of that. And Sam is probably engaging in that behavior for a sensory input, right? It's pleasurable to him. It makes a cool sound. It feels fun. There's something reinforcing in that for him. So those interventions would be different for each of those uh, kiddos, right? Because they serve different functions. You wouldn't just say, okay, we're going to remove the paper from anybody that rips paper because that's what Alex wanted, right? He didn't want the paper to begin with. Um, so it kind of gives you an idea of what we mean when we say we are developing individualized function-based behavior interventions.